page quite literally. Can just get that one, but it's completely responsive, which is at if they have an active subscription, then what we're going to do is check. Oh, what is up? It is another beautiful week here in New York City. It's a Monday morning and we're about to crank into week two of the startup residency. So last week had a huge development week, got quite literally the most full stack work I have ever done in a space of like five days, published, back ends up, front ends up, like ready to go for week two. And this week I've got some pretty like core functionality things that I need to get done in order to be able to progress forward at a rate that I'm happy with at least. So let's go cover those, but first let's get some coffee. Well, from a development point of view, this week is gonna be stacked. Let me show you what happened last week, and then I'll show you what the plan's gonna be for this week. All right, let's find a spot. Okay, nice. So last week was actually insane, like development-wise. I can't believe how much code I shipped. So last week we've got the integrated Discord connection, we've got selecting permissions, we've got payment processing, we got a mailing service, we got an onboarding UX UI flow, we've got a landing page UI UX flow, initialized like a whole theming editor as well, so like I built my own custom solution. Also the dynamic pricing handler to ensure that like my platform's fees are always consistent no matter what the price is. Front end, 3,100 additions, 428 deletions, then the back Back end, 1437 with 79 deletions. The back end was stacked last week. Okay, but now we get into this week, and this week is where it's gonna get super interesting. I wanna complete the end to end flow from a new user coming in completely cold all the way to publishing their page with a successful payment from a user that can then get access to their private Discord community. That is the dream scenario. I am actually a secret for you guys, 75%, 80% of the way there already. Point two of three that I've written down here for this week as well, I wanna have the fully functioning theme editor ready to go. Fonts as a maybe. And then finally, number three, I wanna prepare for my personal page launch. Bonus little fact I've got on here as well, I've had engineering managers from two potential competitors reaching out, potentially floating like employment opportunities. I don't wanna go and work for someone else and then in like a couple of years time be like, oh man, what if? What if I'd just done it myself? And you know, even if it fails, at least I'll know. So yeah, anyway, I've said no. At this stage, we're just gonna build alone and we're gonna have fun and we're gonna film it and we're gonna just enjoy our time here in New York. Let's get the day started. it out. Over the weekend I smashed out a ton of landing page updates so as you can see actually no you can't see but my code editor is stacked. Essentially I'm going to need to have maybe four main things sorted by the end of this week. That's going to be first of all the user onboarding experience it needs to be absolutely seamless from A all the way to B in like two minutes. That's the goal. Now, what does that mean technically? Well, that's gonna mean, first of all, we're going to need to actually host our back end somewhere. So second step is gonna be hosting front end. What I'm thinking for the back end is I'm going to put that up on Railway because they're a nice little, if you haven't heard of Railway, by the way, they're like almost the vassal for back end hosting. Pretty sick, like backed by YC, 
seen a lot of cool stuff by them. So yep, that's what I'm gonna use for the back end. For the front end, we'll just get that up on Vercel because it's a Next.js project. That's the two things, back end and front end up by the end of the week. Following that, we're also going to need our theme editor, Sust. Theme editor essentially allows people to customize their pages, specifically how they want them to look like. The color picker, which absolutely needs to be in, completely responsive, which is actually already 90% of the way there as well. So we're actually looking pretty good for the theme editor. Theme editor is underway. Finally, my last point on my demo investor update was preparing my personal page for launch over the next week or so. That does not mean it's going to be launched, but it needs to be at least getting there. End to end, all the way to production, ready to go so that I can launch my personal one. So we're actually looking pretty good for the week already. I think doing a little bit of work over the weekend for fun, which is, you know, I do enjoy contributing to it, does help with the Monday morning because as you can see, we're already like 90% of the way there on most of these tasks. Now, if you're new here, if you're wondering, for the front end, we're using Next.js with Tailwind and TypeScript. On the back end, we're using Nest.js with TypeScript, Prisma, and PostgreSQL. We're generating types to the front end. It's all beautifully integrated into like one big bundle. It's looking very, very nice. The app I'm building is a subscription membership app for creators like myself who want to monetize their community and like build really tight knit communities of people that just love the same things that they do. So yeah, we're gonna get underway. I'm gonna get coding and the day is just getting started. Let's go. Okay, so I've just been getting into some deep focus for the last couple of hours. Just came across this wild bug where when the user accepts the Discord invite, which is a one-time use, by the way, they're redirected into the server to where the bot then triggers an event on my backend. What it's doing is it's sending a unique identifier invite code as well as a guild ID, and it's figuring out whether that's actually a valid invite code or not. And if it is, it's gonna check the subscription status of the user, see if they're active, and if so, it's gonna assign them some premium roles. Now, the problem that I'm having right now is that I've got an array of these invite codes that are coming through for a user just because I've tested this test user like 20 times. They've got 20 invite codes potentially in the database. But this is one field on each invite code called uses. And for all of them, the integer is zero, which makes no sense because when you accept the invite, you're taken into the server. So that uses field should update to at least one, right? Well, it's not. So I've got to figure out why not. Hopefully we can get this bug sorted. Otherwise, I'm a little bit stuck. So it's all right. I always figure these things out. So yeah, we'll keep going. We'll see if we can make it work. We have made some super sick progress. So I was a little bit stumped like an hour ago and there's also not that much coffee in here. So the way that Discord does their like updating and endpoints and I don't know, just the way that they wanted to let me know what invite codes were still valid is they only sent me the ones that haven't been used. So what I was doing is retrieving this list of invite codes that I would compare with my backend and then the codes would never match because obviously the codes aren't in both lists. So what I do now is I take that list of the current active ones that are available in the server and then I take my backend ones, compare them and if there's one different, and I'm doing this like within like half a millisecond, if there's one different, then I've got like a 99.99999% chance that that is the user that's trying to claim that particular invite code. <sighs> I know, it sounds a little bit wild, but I've got a system working. I actually just had it all run. The attribution went smoothly. So bug is fixed, which means we can move on. We can keep going. 
All right, so next on the agenda now, now that I've got that out of the way, is after a user has accepted the invite code, what I wanna do is assign them the permissions. When you connect your Discord server as a creator, you're going to assign a premium role or a variety of premium roles that users will receive when they subscribe to your page or your Discord or whatever it's gonna be. And so it's now my job as the platform to assign those premium roles to the user if they have an active subscription in place. Now what that's gonna look like is essentially just right after the step of the attribution of claiming the invite code and getting that sussed, it's just getting those premium roles that are essentially an array of IDs that I've got in my relational database and ensuring we have permissions to update the roles on the user in the guild and then essentially just updating those roles. Sounds simple, but let's break it down. So essentially, in a nutshell, all I've got to do now as the platform is take these premium roles and add those to that premium user. That's all I got to do. And what that looks like is just once again using the Discord JS API, taking a couple of IDs and then assigning them to that user. Here's the catch. The only way that this works with Discord, the way that they built all this, is that if the Discord bot has a higher rank than the other people that it's assigning roles to, it kind of makes sense. Imagine like a small time employee telling the CEO what to do. That's kind of what's going on here. So what I've got to do is lift this employee, which is essentially the bot, and lift him up on top of this guy so that he can choose what roles go to which user. So yes, now I've got to build a system that can handle that. That's actually almost done because I started writing a little bit of it late last week. So that's the next step. Once I've got the roles assigned, once I've got the user attributed, now I can feed back to my backend that yes, the user is in and they've got their roles subscribed. Great, everything is good to go. I also set up a logger late last week. So now if anything does go wrong, I've got like an entire logbook of all the events that occurred. So that's really good just for my like debugging and reporting in the future. So yeah, pretty much that's where we are at this stage. Once I get that role task sussed, we're actually in a very, very healthy position to potentially launch to production in the next seven days. That's the MVP at least. I've got so many more features, so many more integrations with different platforms that I wanna do, but this gets us into like critical MVP territory where the core features to be able to even launch this thing are kind of in place. So yeah, I'm feeling good about that. This afternoon, I'm just gonna focus on smashing that role task. And from there, I think we can just keep moving forward. The last thing after that, will just be ensuring that the UX flow from a user who doesn't know who we are to published page ready to like bring in users and subscriptions is just the most seamless flow and we're already like halfway there i've got the landing page almost ready to go i've got the onboarding flow almost ready to go they can connect their discord premium roles set a price so many different things so it's all coming together it's looking really really good something else that i've seen a little bit in the comments recently as well is people talking about how do you like balance and understand and even just like figure out what tasks to work on first how do you prioritize stuff this is something that I think you can't just learn in a day. It's something that you learn from working in a team, especially a high pressure team, of developers, product managers, whoever. And so for me, it all comes down to what moves the needle the fastest and the, to the highest quality as soon as possible. In this application, there are so, so, so many things that I could be working on. For example, like front end is never ever gonna finish. Like front end will probably go on for the rest of my life. <laughs> because that's just the nature of front end. You're always gonna tweak things. But the back end, all I'm really trying to do is nail down to the core MVP functionality that gets this app off the ground and at least lets me get some customers in. That is my kind of like number one priority. So for me, it's just every day going, okay, out of everything that I need to do, just clear all that for a second. Let's just start with a blank sheet and go boom, 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 boom. Like what are the core tasks for me to do right now that move the needle and actually make me feel like there's progress, people can see progress. It's very clear that there's actual functional progress. And that's a lot of the time where I'm putting my energy, functional progress. Often that means stuff that you don't really see that's visual. So it's like backend work and it's things where different services are connecting and different things are doing different things and mail services and loggers and all that kind of thing. Things that actually just move the needle and get us closer to MVP launch. That's where I'm focusing my time. And a lot of that just comes down to, to be honest, just working in teams where you have high pressure needs and there's targets to meet. I think just the more that you do it, the more that you're in development teams and the more that you like put yourself under pressure to like get things out to a really high standard and quality on time, you're gonna figure out how to prioritize things really, really well. Anyway, minor rant for the day. But uh, yeah, we're gonna keep coding. We're gonna keep moving forward. And uh, we are making really good progress today. So I'm feeling good. All right, let's get to it.
minutes after lunch and it's working. I've got the roles automatically being added. Check this out. Okay, so this is what's going on. We've got the this.client.on, which is essentially a Discord JS function that is listening for when a new user is added to the guild. What we're gonna do straight away is get the current guild invite. So this is looking for anyone that's got a pending Discord invite in my database that also has an active subscription. So they're allowed to be here. Then what we're gonna do is check against both of those values to see if any of them don't exist within the larger array of invites. And if so, we're gonna do an update on the database with the claimed by Discord ID, which is the member user ID from their Discord user. Then I'm gonna fire it into my logger with the Discord invite claimed type alongside the Discord invite the, with the invite code and also the customer email. Finally, and this is the coolest part that I've just figured out right now, we get the premium roles, which are what the creator sets, the premium roles that need to be assigned to the user once they successfully subscribe. Then what we're gonna do is check if the user who's just joined the server has those premium roles. And if they don't, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add those roles to that premium user and finally break the instance. That is literally the entire function. I just went through it from zero to 100 and it worked. So gonna do it a couple more times to check if there's any edge cases. But other than that, guys, we have fast tracked and look at the time. It's literally 1.19 on a Monday. Are you kidding? We are flying through this build. Wow, frothing. Okay, let's keep going. Seeing as now I can move pretty much all of these over to merged, because I just fixed them all. Uh, redirect on successful, I need to do that one. That's actually going to be that. Okay, cool. These are actually two tasks right here that are fairly crucial that I get sussed ASAP. The first one, redirect on successful payment. So when someone actually does successfully pay, instead of it just like sending them a Discord invite via email or giving it to them on their homepage right there, I do want to redirect somewhere. So I've got to figure out where they should go. Most likely probably just to like a dashboard or something. But take note, the user in this case will not currently, in most cases, have a current account on my back end. So, Need to figure out an edge case for that where they can access their subscription details without a user. And then the second one, an endpoint to check the Discord bot does have the top level permissions to assign roles. And that's just going back to that thing I talked about before, where in order to be able to actually like assign roles, the bot has to have those top level CEO permissions, otherwise it can't do it. So I need a way, an endpoint that the user can check in their like edit window in their theme manager on the front end before they publish to double check that the Discord bot does have those permissions. And if it doesn't, prevent them from publishing the page because obviously nothing's gonna work. I think what I'll do is I'll start with the redirect because that's like an easy win right there. That'll be three for three for the day. And then I'll move on to the Discord bot role checking. All right, let's get it. Fantastic day. Saw a solar lunar eclipse. Solved a whole lot of bugs. Got a whole lot of features pushed. Man, we killed it today. I think uh, next priority is gonna be feature-wise cancellation logic so people can actually cancel the subscription. Probably a crucial feature. Um, but maybe I've got like a 28 day window until that's even necessary. Number two is gonna be the connection provider removal. So if they actually remove like a connection, like a Discord or a Slack or a Telegram or anything like that, it should actually unpublish their page because you don't wanna have some sort of weird published but broken connection material up there. Otherwise everything's just gonna fall apart. Otherwise those three things as well, the redirect on successful payment, the endpoint to check a Discord box, has top level permissions and then also a handler function for payment failures. Otherwise, I think we're doing pretty good. I think we might head home, hang out with Maddie. Hope you enjoyed the vlog so far and subscribe if you're a dev.
now, time for a brief little dev chat. I had a comment a couple of days ago where someone said, how did you learn everything that you know right now? And personally, like obviously I know enough to be able to build stuff myself and I can work alone and like, yes, from an outside perspective, I can see that yes, I have some good skills, but I didn't learn it all at once. You can't just jump into like understanding all at once. It's kind of like if you're playing like a sports game, you're playing like football or rugby or whatever it is, there's like deep context knowledge that you only really learn from experience in that game. It's the exact same with programming. You don't just learn stuff just from the internet or just from a teacher or just from a book or a course or whatever it might be. You learn it from being in it and doing it every single day for a long period of time. A lot of people try and optimize for memorization and that is just so unnecessary in the world of development. For example, like a CSS property, you can just Google it. Moral of the story, don't optimize for memorization, optimize for core understanding. When you're learning, no matter whether you're a beginner or you're intermediate, you're advanced, whatever it is, when you're learning, just like optimize for understanding and deep knowledge of what you're actually doing. That's gonna help you like way down the road in every project that you're working on, like whether that's in a team or by yourself. If you can critically think about a project or an item or a line of code that you're working on, it's gonna dramatically help you debug things write things cleaner, write things more efficient, make things just better for you and your product long term. That's my opinion anyway. I think we really all should be optimizing for understanding, not memorization. For all of you that are in the comments and commenting you are learning right now, congrats to you, I'm very proud of you, keep it up. And for those of you that are devs or even not even devs, like hey, shout out to you guys, thanks for sticking around and watching the show. Can we call it a show yet? It's been about like five or six, maybe even seven weeks of non-stop uploads, like three videos a week. Anyway, we've just about hit Chelsea. I'm gonna go catch up with Mads and Hermie, have some dinner, chill out for the rest of the afternoon, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for sticking around. I'll see you guys in the next one. Woo!